Uh, Madam President, and I rise to try to advance important legislation to fully authorize 27 Veterans Affairs clinics around the country, 18 different states, communities that desperately need these facilities for our veterans, including two in Louisiana, Lafayette and Lake Charles. And Madam President, these clinics have been on the books, planned for, uh, approved for quite a while. And unfortunately, they ran into several bureaucratic glitches and hurdles. In the case of our two clinics in Louisiana, the first thing was a flat out mistake, a screw up at the VA, which they fully admit to. But they made some errors in the contract letting process. And uh, because of that, they had to stop that entire bidding process and back up and start all over. That basically cost us a year in terms of those vital community-based clinics in Lafayette and Lake Charles. Then, as they were into that year of delay, then really out of the blue, the Congressional Budget Office decided to score these sorts of clinics in a different way than they ever did before, and that created a scoring issue with regard to all 27 of these clinics in 18 states. Well, on a bipartisan basis, a number of us went to work on that issue to clear up that. And we have solved that issue. And the House has put a bill together with strong bipartisan support, virtually unanimous support, has passed the bill that resolves that issue. It came to the Senate. I reached out to all of my colleagues. There were a few concerns, and I addressed those concerns proactively by finding savings and other parts of the budget to counter, uh, to off balance, counteract any possible cost of this bill. And so we added that amendment to the proposal. And through all of that hard work, we have addressed all of the substantive concerns with moving forward on these 27 clinics. And so, Madam President, I've been trying to pass this bill with an amendment at the desk so that these 27 clinics can move forward as expeditiously as possible. As I said, every substantive concern about this bill as it would be amended has been met. Everybody's concerns, conservatives, moderates, liberals. The only objection to the bill now is from the distinguished senator from Vermont, who quite frankly wants to hold it hostage, wants to object to it, simply uh, to try to advance his much broader veterans bill, which he brought to the floor and was unsuccessful in passing several weeks ago. Well, I appreciate uh, the senator's passion on this issue. I appreciate his legislation, his focus on it. Uh, the problem is that legislation does have many senators with concerns about it, including me, 43 senators, 43 percent of the overall U.S. Senate, 43 out of 100, have serious substantive concerns with that much broader bill. In contrast to that, no one in the Senate has substantive concerns with my narrower bill with regard to 27 VA clinics around the country. And so I simply suggest that we agree on important matters we can agree on. We use that to begin to build consensus, to move forward constructively, do what we can agree on, continue to talk about and work on that on which there is some disagreement. And so in that spirit, Madam President, I come to the floor again to ask unanimous consent that the Veterans Affairs Committee be discharged from further consideration of the narrow Veterans Clinics bill I was referring to, H.R. 3521, and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration that my amendment, which is at the desk, which I also referred to, be agreed to, that the bill as amended be read a third time and passed, and the motion to reconsider be laid upon the table. Is there objection? Uh, reserving the right to object. The Senator from Vermont. I find this approach really unfortunate uh, to follow through on the scenario the Senator from Vermont himself laid out. 
Yeah, yes, we can find agreement here and move forward, but then Katie bar the door. That might lead to our finding agreement on other important matters that can help veterans. And we might be moving forward in this area and that area and the other one. God forbid we make progress to help veterans and actually get something done versus having a hostage standoff. God forbid. I think the more productive way of working together is to agree on what we can agree on and keep talking about those areas where we have disagreement. And in fact, in the past, Senator Sanders has endorsed that approach in the area of veterans affairs. He has said in the past, working on another issue, quote, I'm happy to tell you, this was November 2013, I'm happy to tell you that I think that was a concern of his, referring to another senator. We got that UC last night, so we moved that pretty quickly. And I want to try to do those things where we have agreement, let's move it, close quote. He agreed on a small focus bill where we did have agreement. He said, let's do that by unanimous consent. Let's agree where we can agree and be constructive and move on. Quote, I want to try to do those things where we have agreement, let's move it. Well, I would say to Senator Sanders through the chair, we have agreement. This is an important matter. 27 clinics isn't the world, but it is an important matter that affects hundreds of thousands of veterans in 18 states, including in my Louisiana communities of Lafayette and Lake Charles. We have agreement, so let's move it. I agree with that approach. I think that's a constructive approach versus saying I have majority support, but not the 60 required, so I'm holding everything else veterans-related hostage. I'm not agreeing to anything else. I don't think that is a constructive approach. I don't think that reflects the spirit of the American people who want us to try to reach agreement where we can reach agreement. I don't think that's a constructive way to build goodwill and to build consensus. So I'd urge my colleague uh, with all due respect to reconsider. Let's agree where we can agree, where we have agreement. Let's move forward where we have agreement. Let's move it. This isn't the world, but it's meaningful, it's significant, and it does not relieve any pressure in terms of the broader veterans discussion regarding the Sanders bill or the Burr alternative or anything else. Those bills are so much more massively larger that these 27 clinics being done separately does not change the discussion or the dynamics of this in any way, shape, or form. So I would really urge my colleague to reconsider. I would urge my colleague from Louisiana, Senator Landrieu, to urge Senator Sanders to reconsider, something she has not done to date. A lot of us are waiting for her support of these important community-based clinics in Lafayette and Lake Charles. She hasn't been on the floor. I urge her to join me on the floor to get this done.